Section 3 of Chapter 24 of the Open Sex Textbook is called A New Generation. And with the young adults coming of age in the 1920s, you see a lot of change in social life, in social norms, and in the uh, the day-to-day -day lives of young men and women in this period. Um, you you see you see this especially with the young girls of the period, uh, who, uh, as OpenStack says, have have rejected their mother's morality. Um, no, they're not rejecting the part. I'm sure their mother is against going on chainsaw massacres, and they're not going on chainsaw massacres. But they are they're dressing in more revealing clothing, wearing their hair short, uh, partying, dancing. Uh, this is this is the group of women known young women known as flappers, and you'll hear a bit about the flappers and how it may have emerged as sort of a, 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 a kind of like a, a a precursor of alternative or, or punk rock. Like, hey, we're rebelling, we're rebelling. But as always happens when there's a movement uh, of rebellious fashion it always ends up turning into we're rebelling against the norm the same way everybody else is rebelling against the norm and eventually it becomes uh, many of these fads become a type of conformity especially among college aged youth uh, but some more significant things than fashion and hairstyles are changing at the time uh, sexual norms are beginning to uh, beginning to liberalize, so it's becoming less and less. Uh, I mean, people always been. I mean, that's how we all got here, and and people have always been doing that outside of the bounds of marriage too. But that's becoming more and more acceptable. Um, you have figures like Sigmund Freud and and Havelock Ellis, who are prominent academics, a psychologist and a um, <clears throat> bangologist, no, sexologist, uh, and they're emphasizing that sex is a natural and pleasurable part of the human experience. Um, an important figure from this time is Margaret Sanger, and we'll look at her from a couple different perspectives. Margaret Sanger uh, is, is revered by many as an important feminist icon, uh, and she was a, a crusader for uh, the development and legalization of birth control and the spreading of information about birth control. So at before this time, to discuss birth control techniques, uh, even from you know not not in a dirty way, but even from a, even from a strictly medical or biological standpoint, you, you could be locked up and put in prison for this. Um, it, was, it was considered obscene to even discuss these things, and, uh, and many, viewed, uh, many viewed birth control of any kind other than abstinence as immoral. Uh, that, is, uh, that certainly was the official position of the the Catholic Church and and many other Christian groups shared that opinion though the others gradually moved away from that opinion uh, Margaret Sanger is the founder of Planned Parenthood which uh, which was the largest organization for the dispersing of birth control both birth control information and then um, as they became available, birth control devices or eventually even birth control medication. Planned Parenthood is especially um, controversial today because today it has, uh, not in Sanger's time, though part of Sanger's vision, uh, it f eventually fulfilled in being one of the largest providers of abortion services, or the largest provider of abortion services in the United States. Uh, so Sanger is revered by many as a feminist icon. However, she's she's also an a, a, a staunch eugenicist, an advocate that um, only the worthy should breed, and uh, the unworthy should be encouraged, or I won't 
I won't put this quote in her mouth. It's not a quote from her. So I'm speaking eugenics broadly here. Uh, if encouragement to not breed doesn't work, well, then perhaps they should be sterilized and prevented from breeding. So when we when we look about when we look at Margaret Sanger, incredibly influential, incredibly important, but also incredibly controversial. Um, we're gonna we're gonna see two different perspectives on her in a row in the playlist. Uh, the Margaret Sanger feminist mini bio will 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 give you the version of Margaret Sanger as feminist hero and icon, and then the Planned Parenthood acknowledges Margaret Sanger's racist legacy. Uh, clip will tell you a bit about the other side of Margaret Sanger. So. This is also, by the way, a, uh, a period that saw the emergence of fundamentalist Christianity as an important force in American society and in American policy makings. So we'll have a, uh, you can't see it on the screen yet because I haven't made it yet, but we'll have a video from me uh, explaining what fundamentalist Christianity is. And then we'll explore the infamous Scopes monkey trial. Uh, at the time in, in Tennessee and many other parts of the country, it was actually against the law to teach evolution in schools. And a substitute teacher named Mr. Scopes did just that, taught evolution in his biology class, and uh, he went to trial for it. Really, a, uh, the trial's basically a publicity stunt. Um, but you'll see two very different worldviews collide in this trial as Clarence Darrow, Scopes' attorney, uh, goes on the war path against the perceived anti-intellectual um, anti-intellectual movement of Christian fundamentalism, and we'll see. Man, this guy is just everywhere in every era. I'm surprised he's not still around. You'll see William Jennings Bryan step forward as the spokesperson for uh, for biblical creationism uh, as against a Darwinian evolution. Uh, under the umbrella of Christian fundamentalism, you'll also meet Billy Sunday, an important, uh, who became a celebrity preacher. He was a baseball star turned fundamentalist preacher who toured the country and became a major celebrity in so doing. We'll hear about, I'm gonna, we'll hear about Alice Paul, the uh, feminist leader who wrote the Equal Rights Amendment, uh, guaranteeing men and women totally equal protection under the law, and we'll see how that amendment actually fails to pass over and over and over again for decades. Then we'll look at something a uh, really impressive movement in African American culture known as the Harlem Renaissance, an explosion in creativity, musical creativity, visual arts, uh, literature, poetry. You'll see a feature about the Harlem Renaissance. You'll hear two Harlem Renaissance era poems, um, If We Must Die by Claude McKay, which is performed by Ice-T, and The Colored Soldier by Langston Hughes. Uh, which is performed by Keith Henley, who, let me double check this, let me make sure I'm right, let me make sure I'm right. Yes, Keith Henley is not ice tea. We'll then turn to look at the wider implications of prohibition. This is the era when alcohol was illegal, which meant nobody ever, ever drank. No, just like crack being illegal didn't mean nobody ever, ever smoked crack. What it meant was that instead of alcohol being accessible in legal and regulated uh, ways, it was put in the hands of organized crime figures like, well, not these guys, like this fella, Al Capone. So you'll see why the prohibition model of of opposition to alcohol addiction was a grave failure leading to 
an increase in crime and violence and widespread death. And you'll quietly ask yourself, I propose no answer to this, you'll quietly ask yourself, why is today's prohibition model against drug addiction any different? Are the results any different? You'll then read and hear about the lost generation, uh, uh, producing some of the greatest literature of American history, are those who, after World War I, just felt like they didn't belong anywhere, who, who, who didn't find their souls spoken to by the excess and wealth available in the Roaring Twenties. See a little feature on the lost generation of authors. Uh, that's where the Great Gatsby was. That's where. What a terrible uh, way to have said that. Uh, this is the movement out of which came the novel The Great Gatsby and all the great works of Ernest Hemingway, which you'll also see a video about. And once you've seen Ernest Hemingway, I'll be back with you.